Hello, uh, I'm artist and author Mark Heine from Victoria, British Columbia, and uh, welcome to my studio. Uh, this is the second video in my series uh, called uh, Elements of Painting. Uh, it's a, a slideshow that uh, follows a series of, of points that I've uh, uh, formulated over the past 43 years as a professional artist. Uh, let's get right into uh, the slideshow. I'm just going to do a, a screen share here and get this going. There we go. Oops, no. Where is it? Screen share. There we go. Okay, so I'm talking to myself again on a Zoom call because I can record it. Um, <clears throat> just in case you're wondering why we're on a Zoom call. Uh, uh, as a studio uh, artist with no one around me, I get to talk to myself a lot. So <laughs> this is just a recording of it. All right, let's get into this. This is my, oh, turn down the audio. Um, this is my list, like I, I mentioned in the last video. This is my painting Bible that has now over the years gone from 12, <clears throat> 12 points to now 66. Uh, things that you should keep in mind and consider when you're painting and when you're composing a work, uh, which is now expanded as I'm doing this video to um, more than 66 uh, points. It's gotten a bit bigger. But like I said, we'll be going through each one of these because each one of these is a word. And depending on where you are in your uh, artistic career, uh, it can mean something different now than it would 20 years from now with a different level of experience. So I put together a slideshow so I can describe uh, what it is that I'm actually talking about when I when I I say these words. Um, that's the first page. And here is page number two. Uh, so I'll just freeze that for a sec. You can see it in, in the in the uh, uh, list here. There are no particular order, but for the video, I've tried to arrange them in uh, order uh, from the beginning of uh, of the work uh, to the end of the work. So from the original concept, working through the composition and more towards the end, we're talking about painting technique uh, and then the end finishes up with framing and such things. So, uh, so that's, I've tried to make an effort to um, put in some kind of order here uh like i said i i spent many years as an illustrator this particular image is a ah uh, rhodocetus i think it called a, i think it's called a rhodocetus or a duradon no it's a bacillosaurus i did this uh, illustration for a an aquarium in italy uh it was projected on a wall uh uh at at life size with a projection a front projection it was a rear projection of the image and a front projection of water uh ripples and it was in a hallway that led down to a, a tank that had whales in it and uh they wanted the ancestors of whales uh i did this uh because there was no existing artwork of a bacillosaurus available uh and uh so i was told this is not really something that uh, is going to be in a science book. So have fun with it. Kind of, you can make up the color scheme, you can make up the patterns and try and keep it roughly. You know, there wasn't really much, much material available on the Pizzillo source. So anyway, I did this illustration and, and, uh, and then I wound up, it wound up being the only sample of a Bacillosaurus available on the internet. So I, I sold it to German Geo magazine later, and then I, I sold it to uh, David Suzuki and the Nature of Things for their One World uh, special that they, they had. And so I've sold it a number of times over and over again. So that's one of the advantages of, of being an illustrator is that you can that you can resell work that you own the copyright to. So just as something that's a little bit fun there. Uh, so we're going right back to the beginning of of when you when you begin your work uh what it is that you want to have uh in mind so uh this painting here actually uh spirit of ember visits topino 
Uh, my work is very much about the environment, about global warming, about human uh, evolution, and um, and so that is my passion. And uh, it's taken some time to figure that out. It's kind of a long road to get there, uh, but um, but but when I first started painting. Uh, I had a, a friend named Brian Johnson who passed away, unfortunately, uh, uh, just a few years ago. Uh, Brian and my father and I used to go for coffee uh, every week. And uh, I was doing illustration work at the time. And generally, the subject of conversation was, what am I going to paint when I'm finished doing commercial work? And uh, And so Brian used to talk, he used to bring in tear sheets of uh, you know, here's a, a, a torn out of a magazine, a, a picture of this, picture of that. You should think about this, think of that. And then I remember he talked to me one time about um, about painting passion, painting what you know. And uh, and uh, I'll give you a little story here because it it was important to me and it, and it made a big difference in in way I think and and I I try to teach it at each one of my mentoring courses when I'm when I'm mentoring. So Brian happened to know. That uh, that I'm a keen fisherman. I put myself through art school as a fishing guide, salmon fishing guide, and and I'm still a keen uh, salmon fisherman. That's part of what's led me to this uh, uh, concern of the environment and and natural uh, coastline of British Columbia. And uh, so Brian said to me one time, "What is it that uh, that you? What moments during fishing?" do you like the most what comes to mind when you're thinking about the best parts of fishing and uh, so i thought about it for a while and and there's a point when when you're salmon fishing where you you're playing a fish on the rod and you know it's big because you can feel the the pull of the rod and feel the weight and it takes time and it takes big runs so you know it's a big fish but you you haven't seen it and uh, salmon are black on the top, and you look down dark water, and you just can't see them because they're they're black against black. And uh, and when you get that fish close enough to the boat, at a certain point when it gets tired, it'll turn over, turn on its side, and sunlight will sweep across the silver scales, and it's like flash photography. The whole side of the fish lights up, and uh, and you can see the size of the of the fish for the first time and it's a very thrilling moment and uh, so I, I told Brian about that and you know a few other moments that that in particular I find exciting and Brian said there are all kinds of people there's lots of fishermen in the world there's all kinds of people that know that moment too but they not they haven't necessarily, thought about it or verbalized it or come to that realization that that is what something that thrills them about fishing and if you paint that any person that fishes is going to recognize that moment and it's going to make an emotional connection and and that's how you get people connected to your work emotionally is by, uh, connect your work is by touching them emotionally and uh, and that same thought can be applied to any specialization that you may have. Say, for instance, and this is an example I use in my classes, uh, if you're a gardener uh, and you like to be out in the garden and, you know, you're, you're working in the garden during the afternoon and the sun and there's there's certain things that happen out there that that uh, that only gardeners know. And only gardeners will recognize if it's in the work. And when they do recognize it, it touches them on a deep level. So painting what you know means that other people will know it too. And the opposite to that is the Marlboro Man. And that's, uh, you know, the, the old magazine ads that show some guy with a tan and and a brand new fishing gear that's never been on before sitting on a rock at this the the shore of a river lighting up a marlboro cigarette and he's got a a, a fly rod with a big metal spin paid on it or some stupid thing that that doesn't make any sense to any fly fisherman that knows 
that 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 is not a lure that you use on a fly rod and it, and it's that kind of falseness that uh that that destroys it but uh, uh you know you got to fight against the marble man by by painting what you know and 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 uh, what's accurate so uh, anyway, that's a little little story that that Brian taught me, and always stuck with me. And uh, and uh, so think about what it is that you are passionate about, uh, and get involved in it. Get get behind it. Um, this painting started because they're planning to build uh, pipelines to the coast, and uh, I used to live in Tofino. And, you know, my kids and I would go play on the beach and I just imagine what would it look at, like if Chester and Beach had a had a freighter or an oil tanker wash up on it. This is, in fact, uh, an image of the Exxon Valdez from the Alaska oil spill. Uh, the, the ship is is from the Exxon Valdez. And and um, and it was the thought of this was was trying to get people to visualize or imagine what an oil tanker or an oil spill would, would look like on, on the West coast of, of Canada and Tofino, which is a, one of the most beautiful uh, beaches in the world. And um, so it, um, it, for me, it's, it's a, a, a something I'm passionate about the, the environment. That's uh, what my work is about here. So we'll go on to the next thing, paint your passions get involved i you know this is me on a beach cleanup crew and then um and then getting involved a little bit more um uh i started this this series of paintings uh called sirens and uh sirens is a, a series of work uh that visualizes uh key moments in a book that i've been writing for for quite a while now and uh, I wrote the outline for the book uh, on this boat uh, on a sail trip from Victoria to Hawaii and back, uh, back in 2014. Um, uh, was it 50, 52, 54 days at sea? And I um, can't remember how many miles. It was uh, equivalent to driving from LA to uh, New York and back plus another 800 miles uh, all uh, and and what I did in my time was a friend and I did it together and uh, and I spent my watch time at the computer uh, writing the outline for the siren story so I wanted to get out on the on the deep ocean in the middle of nowhere and uh, 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 see what it was like out there and and that was all part of the research for the book so this is kind of definitely kind of going overboard in terms of uh work there's me uh and that uh that sorry the photo's kind of fuzzy here this is me picking up a, a japanese fishing float from uh the center of the pacific gyre that's that large uh garbage pit in the middle of the pacific ocean this one had been there for years and years, uh, covered with barnacles and, and one crab. And as a matter of fact, the story of this, finding this glass fishing float, uh, wound up being a central part of the story uh, of Sirens, uh, wound up being in the book. So uh, it kind of evolved its way through here. And that's the boat uh, in uh, Radio Bay in Hilo. All right. so. Now we're down to the very first of the, well, not really the first. The first was paint your passion. The second <laughs> in the elements of painting is concept. And um, what I was taught when I was in, in art school was if you have a good idea and a poor execution, it's going to be an a great image. If you have a great execution and a poor idea, it's going to be not so good. If you have a great concept, a great idea, and a great execution combined, that is the the best thing that that you can hope for. Uh, so, I really encourage people to to think about what they're painting. I know so many artists out there that that they're painting another mountain or another loaf of bread or another 
still life with grapes and a wine glass and oh my god it just it that is not that is not painting to me it's it's um it's an exercise in technique but there's no thought involved there's no concept behind it and uh and it really leaves me uh dry not not inspired at all i mean sure there's there's great technique there's lots of great technique uh, out there uh but take some of that technique and put it to something that matters some kind of idea or theme or story or or reason for having that painting uh for for me art is uh is a is a a, a a way to capture uh society and um it's a record of 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 society and and uh i don't know it's just it it's not doing its job if it's not saying something so anyway think about concept i think concept is an important um uh, an important part of a painting subject matter consider what you're painting um be creative um i prefer myself i prefer figurative work there's uh a lot of elements to figurative work that are different than sorry there's a lot of elements to figurative work that are different than uh in the um uh, uh landscape or still life um but that's that's just me but uh subject matter think about subject matter it's important uh to consider uh okay this is uh something that um can save a lot of people <laughs> in terms of their career uh the importance of series uh, a series of work and i know so many people that get caught in a rut and there's a fine line between a style and a rut um as an artist you may paint a series of barns to, or, or paint a bunch of barns when you're when you're starting out maybe you want to do landscapes you wind up doing barns and my dad started on barns and he did a bunch of barn paintings and and so he took those to galleries the galleries put the Put them up on the wall the barn sold clients got to got to recognize that if you want barns this is the guy to go and see and and so the artist feels compelled to to satisfy his fan base or his collectors with the same thing and it's very difficult to to move forward and change because you feel compelled to to this is what you're known for i know people that did the same thing with birds and and people that do still lives or whatever they, they they get stuck in one thing and they they get so known for it that they can't they feel that they can't change and uh if you call it a series you can do whatever you want you can have a series of barns and when that series is complete you do a series of birds and then you do a series of this or a series of that and you get known for your series and and what that means is you're not known for any particular thing you're not buttonholed into one subject and one technique you 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 basically grant yourself license to go from whatever you want to whatever you want and that's what your customers start to appreciate is is you moving from this to that uh you know uh, the 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 jump that you make uh when you when you uh expand into a new series uh is thrilling and and it and get known for that you have no limitations so working in a series and and for me i tend to put a series together for a show so if i have a show coming up I'll have a theme for the show and I'll, and I'll I'll do a series specifically for that show. And when that show is done, that's the end of that series. And I move on to the next expression, whatever that will be. 
so it gives you a lot of flexibility. So in advance, think about something uh, that you can put into a series. And that gives the show a theme as well, which which the more you can pack together in a show, a theme, uh, a sponsor, uh, a charity to donate to, uh, all these different things, you can really put a, sh a, a tight uh, uh, show together. Uh, holy cow, we're only into uh, this a short way and we're already past uh, 15 minutes. Um, so I'm going to stop this here and uh, we'll get back to uh, the um, the elements of painting uh, in video number three. Uh, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, these ideas that I have are my own ideas that I've kind of formulated. It may not be for everyone. It may not be the way everyone thinks, but this is the way I think and uh, and take what you what you want from it but uh thanks for watching and tune in for the next one all right stop this take care